Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at these. So I often have conversations with people about DI boxes and very often it will go one of two ways. Either people will say, I don't need a DI box, my guitar's got a jack on it, my mixing desk has got a jack on it, what do I even need a DI box for? Or the other way that this conversation sometimes goes is people say, well we use DI boxes but I've got no idea what it is or what it's there for, we were just told that we should use one and so we do. And so in today's video I want to address that question and ask what is a DI box and why do we even need to do one and how much of a difference does it really make? So we're going to look at a few of these DI boxes, see what they are, see what they're doing and try to understand a little bit about why we even need a DI box in the first place. Let's go and have a look. Okay, so a couple of weeks ago I got all my DI boxes out, I plugged my guitar in and I played through a few chords through each of the DI boxes, recorded it all down and then I've listened to it all back to try and work out uh, what I think to the sound of all these different boxes. But I started off just by plugging a jack lead from my guitar straight into a line level socket on my mixer and recording that one. Now that was by far the worst sounding audio that I recorded that day. And I kind of expected that to be the case. But the problems with not using a DI box are not just related to audio quality, there are other issues as well. So it's worth just spending a few minutes to understand what a DI box is and what it's doing, and then we can understand why we have the problems that we have. So what actually is a DI box? Well, a DI box is going to do two really important things for us. First of all, on your mixing desk, you are going to have two types of sockets on the back of it. You're either going to have a mic socket or a line level socket. And pretty much every mixing desk will have these two. If you look at the sockets on the back of your mixing desk, that's what you're going to see, mic and line. Now, just because a guitar socket also has a jack on it doesn't mean that it's sending out a line level signal. The signal that's coming out of a guitar is actually what's called an instrument level signal. It's a much higher impedance signal and it's very different from a line level signal that you see on a mixing desk. That means that the mixing desk isn't entirely happy processing that signal that it's receiving. And that I think is why I was having the audio issues that I was having. It was sounding very compressed, it was sounding very muddy, there was no clarity and detail to that sound. Um, it was just, it was not a pleasant sound really. So the first thing that our DI box is going to do is it's going to take our instrument level signal from our guitar and it's going to convert it into a mic level signal. So you'll see that the output of your DI boxes is on an XLR just the same as what you'd see on the back of a microphone. And from this point on, we can treat this signal exactly the same way as we would a microphone. So what the desk is seeing is a microphone signal. Effectively, the, the mixing desk thinks that it's receiving a microphone signal from your guitar. It thinks your guitar has just become a microphone. And so all the same treatment and processing that we would do to a microphone, we can do to our guitar that's coming out of a DI box. And and that makes the mixing desk much happier, it's much more able to process that signal, all the clarity and detail and everything else comes back into our sound and it's suddenly sounding a whole load nicer. The second thing that our DI box is doing is it's balancing our audio signal. Now this is quite a complicated thing and I'm not going to try and dig into this in this video because it's kind of beyond the scope of what I'm trying to say today. But for now just know that an unbalanced signal can only be sent for about up to five meters without having any issues. A balanced signal, on the other hand, can be sent much, much greater distances, up to kind of 80 meters without any real issues. So normally, if you think about a church situation, most of the time we're gonna be using DI boxes on the stage for plugging in instruments, guitars, keyboards, that kind of thing. And then we need to send that signal from the stage all the way to the back of the room where our mixing desk is located. 
And that needs to be done with a balance signal. As I say, you can do up to five meters without balancing that signal, but normally five meters isn't gonna get you anywhere near the back. Um, you're gonna need to go through a DI box or something to balance that signal up to be able to send it and keep that audio nice and clean. So those are the two jobs that our DI boxes are gonna be doing for us. So they are really important. We need to make sure we're using them guitars, keyboards, if you've got things like a violin or a cello with a pickup on it with a jack output, again, I would go through a DI box. Anywhere where you've got a jack output on an instrument, go through a DI box. And as I say, that part of my test didn't surprise me at all. Not using a DI box sounded muddy and compressed and not very nice. And as soon as I put it through a DI box, the sound was loads better. And that was exactly what I expected to hear. However, the next part of my test really did surprise me. So the second thing I discovered when I was using these DI boxes was actually the differences between these different DI boxes in terms of the sound quality was really minimal. All of them sounded pretty similar. I mean, we have quite a range of DI boxes here. We've got the this little one here is only about 25 quid. Um, through to this one, which is quite a nice expensive one. This was over £100, these ones. So you'd expect there to be some range in the quality of sound from these boxes. And don't get me wrong, there was a small degree of change from one to another. There were some very subtle differences between them. The most expensive one was the best one, but not by a great deal. It was only just the best one. And I'd say the worst one of, the all, of them all was the Behringer, but again, it was only just. One thing that is worth considering is the other features that you get when you're looking at a DI box. As I say, this one's 25 quid, and all it gives you is an input for your guitar and an output to your mixing desk. There's nothing else on this DI box, whereas some of them will have things like attenuation, so you can reduce the level if some guitars will have a very loud pickup inside the guitar and you need to reduce that level before it gets to the mixing desk. They can be quite helpful. Equally, many DI boxes will have things like a ground lift switch, which again can be quite helpful if you've got a noisy pickup on a guitar the ground lift switch can be a lifesaver. The other thing that you will also see is additional outputs on a DI box. So this one, you have your main input, you have a link output which you could take out to, say, a guitar tuner. You then have another output which you could take out to a guitar amp and then you have your output that you can take out to a PA system. So this can be quite helpful if you've got lots of things going on, lots of effects pedals, lots of guitar amps, those sorts of things. It can be useful to have some extra sockets on there as well. But in terms of audio quality, the differences were very, very subtle. Now that tells me a couple of things. First of all, it tells me it is definitely worth using a DI box, but it doesn't particularly matter which DI box you choose, I would just go with one based on the features that you have, unless the only time is if you're in a particularly critical situation. If, as a church, you do some audio recordings, if you're gonna do multi-track worship band recordings and you're gonna try and produce a CD or something like that, uh, then I'd say it's worth getting the best you can because when you come to recording audio, you want the best that you can record. So a higher quality DI box might be better in that situation. But for general use, general Sunday morning use, I can't say that there was a great deal of difference between any of these DI boxes and I would be equally happy using any of them for a Sunday morning service. The 25 quid one is absolutely fine. Likewise, the Behringer one was okay. It was a little bit thinner sounding, wasn't quite so much body and warmth to that one, but it was fine. And the most expensive one had the most detail to it and most clarity to it, but again, it was so subtle. Now the full video of all of this is also available on the channel and I'll stick a link to it so Go and check that out if you want to have a listen to the audio examples yourself and just see how subtle they were. And like I say, there may be some situations where some of these DI boxes make more sense than others. But overall, 
I couldn't find a significant difference between these. Certainly I can't make a recommendation as to you should definitely go and buy this one because it just wasn't enough of a difference. They were all very, very similar and that really surprised me. I wasn't expecting that at all. So on that complete bombshell, I am gonna finish this video here. Thank you so much for joining me today. If this video has been helpful to you, then I'd love it if you could do a couple of things for me. First of all, if you could hit the like button, that would be fantastic. And secondly, if you could share it with somebody, anybody you think uses DI boxes or might want to know more about DI boxes, then please share this video. That would be really, really helpful. So for now, take care and I will see you in the next video. Sorry to get in there.